talking shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint. I can see through the facade like an What's going on, fight fans? It's another great day when you love MMA. Welcome back to Mad Maddie Fight Talk. Your host, Mad Maddie, once again with Crazy Chris. We are back at it again. Here with a big fight announcement coming to you in the middleweight division between Sean Tarzan Strickland and Alex the Overhype Pereira. These guys are set to face each other at UFC 277 so far, so far, July 30th. In T-Mobile in Las Vegas, God willing, none of these guys gets hurt. This is actually a very interesting matchup in the middleweight division, which is extremely stacked. And everybody knows, heard the call out of Jared Cannonier saying he wants to fight Izzy next. I think Izzy's going to grant that, considering the fact that he's already beat uh, two of the top three twice. So I'm assuming that Cannonier fight's going to happen. And Sean Strickland is ranked number four right now. And Alex Pereira's an unranked fighter. He's not even in the top 15. So I want to know what your thought process is on this matchmaking. It's kind of, it's very interesting in this day and age. Yeah, fantastic fight matchup by the UFC. And um, I have a couple of things to say beforehand. One, uh, shout out to Cain Velasquez and his family. I hope, uh, God, you know, God willing that he gets through this and he gets back to his kids. Um, Hold and on. Just... Free Cain and the fact that that motherfucker's in jail and you guys are letting a fucking sex offender walk around is insane. It's, it's ridiculous. And as a father of, of two kids and one of them being a four-year-old daughter, I 100% free, you know, support free K movement. Um, and going on to the fight. So Alex Pereira versus uh, Sean Strickland, absolute phenomenal matchup. So thankful that Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard and those guys at the UFC put this fucking fight together. Let me tell you something. DC said this a back, back ago, Matt. And uh, a little while ago, he said, when these, you know, we're in the enter entertainment era. There's no doubt about it. Going into 2022, it's, it's who can put on the biggest show and the baddest shit and, and make the biggest noise all the time, right? It's the next best thing, right? <clears throat> DC said, very clean, plain and simple. I, I come in as a retired fighter. I say, who do you want to fight next? And a lot of these guys do not call their shot. They don't. They, you know, the, I'm going to take Curtis Blades. He said, hey, we have this guy in the arena, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the goats there. What do you think about him? He says, oh, I love you. Me old chick, I, I, you know, you're one of the greatest. I love you, man. Oh, that's not going to get you ahead. That's not going to gain you more fans. You just knock the dude out, and then you say how much you love the other guy. That you, it, It's ridiculous. I hate it. Now, Alex Pereira said, I want to fight Cannoneer. He said, I want to fight the guy who's supposed to be fighting for the belt so I can show you that I deserve to fight for the belt, right? Well, guess what? You got the next best thing. A guy on a six-fight win streak in Sean Tarzan Strickland, who's been absolutely on a tear. You know, it's a phenomenal fight. Uh, six and oh, like I said, well, guess what? You got a guy who's Alex Pereira who hasn't lost since 2015 and is on a five fight win streak and has won his last two fights in the UFC. Who's absolutely looking great. So, um, you know, it's an exciting matchup, man. I, I, I can't wait it's, to see it. It's an exciting matchup, but it, it brings two questions to my mind. One, Sean Strickland <laughs> should be probably fighting for the belt, if not really close to that and should be fighting people on that caliber. Now, with that being said, uh, Robert Whitaker and Marvin Vittori, they're actually set to fight before this fight goes down on UFC 275. So I understand that both of them are taken up and he has beat a few guys in the top 10, but, but why punch so far down if you're Sean Strickland and risk losing to a guy like Alex Pereira. And at the same time, I have a lot, I have a lot. I, to say. I'm going to let you finish, but I have a lot to say about that. So let's go yeah, that's back. Fine. Hold on. And the second question is why would you give Alex Pereira such uh, a tough fight that you wouldn't, you wouldn't, why are we not doing this to Sean O'Malley? Why are we not doing this to other rising stars that, that have been beating great, great shit out no, of people? That, that, that's great questions. That's great questions. And this goes back to, to being a fighter and not a, a business set mind person, bro. These people rely on their management heavily for these type of things. And they rely, hey, whatever my coach says, I'm going to do next, whatever my management team puts together, we're going to go ahead and attack full head. Well, these guys care because the numbers need to make sense, right? I don't give a fuck if I'm your manager. Making 35% of zero means zero for me. I want to make sure you're going to get a, get a name and get – so, look, look, again, it goes back to DC saying, call your shot. Congratulations to Alex Pereira. You got a fucking shot, man. You got what you called for. Congratulations to you, your management team, and everybody else making money along the way because you're probably going to make UFC pay-per-view points on that. Now, uh, or, or, or you're going to headline a card somewhere, and, and you're going to put put together some momentum for your name, right? Now, again, he's he's also not a young cat. He's been around 
just as much as Israel Adesanya. Robert Whitaker is younger than Alex, right? So he's not trying to wait around either. Um, Sean Strickland's Sean Strickland, I hate to say this, he's an absolute idiot. I don't even know if that guy has a good management team or if he talks, even knows what he fucking makes on fights, right? He sees a fat bag that he's good with, he moves on. I don't, for me, you're an absolute tard. Want a six fight win streak, you're going to go fight somebody who beat, who knocked out Israel Adesanya. So you know he's a tough fight. You know your stylistically match up terribly for him. And you're going to go out there and accept this fight. First I- Absolute bullshit. I, did, I, I don't think he's. If I, if I was his management team, though, if I was his management team, like you said, why punch down? I would have never put this fight together for him. Well, I don't. I don't know who's managing Sean Strickland. Maybe they want to take out a guy who, because they are, they are definitely hyping Alex Pereira up, and he, they're living off of those two wins he has over Israel Adesanya in kickboxing. Now, as a kickboxer, Pereira's thirty-three and seven. He's really good. He obviously has a knockout over the champion. Bro, this is not back in the day. We don't live in the past. Conor McGregor's knocked out so many people, and what has he done lately? Nothing. So my point being, Israel Adesanya is now an MMA, and he's an MMA champion. Like, and this, this is a different talk for a different time, but since we're on the subject and it's in his weight class, the whole reason they're trying to get Alex Pereira, obviously, is to get him to fight Adesanya because they know that's going to be a huge, huge fight if he keeps winning and can get him that far ahead. Adesanya has evolved so much that I, I think that Pereira needs to take his time and he's trying to jump the gun. Watching Pat, him fight, hold on, Pat. watching him fight Bruno Silva, he struggled in that fight. It's MMA, it's not kickboxing. His stand up, no Bruno doubt. He struggled in his first two fights too, and he didn't fight big names either. Alex KO'd the guy he fought in his first fight. Uh, uh, Israel got a barely got a TKO, or what was it? A, 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 was that the decision that Marvin Vittori was hanging over his head? Uh, uh, that's I'm, all I'm, I'm saying. Sure. I think Marvin but, Vittori was his first fight, and that was and and look where they're at now, though. That's my point. Is these guys are the top of the heat. So Alex Pereira needs to take his time. Bruno Silva's no slouch. Alex Pereira is not a young man, and he's 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 a middle aged man who's looking to move up pretty quick. And I can agree with his skill set, brother. He, he he's knocking guys out at the lower weight. He deserves to move up. Maybe maybe he's moving up extremely quick. I again, I'm not in the UFC. I'm not his management team. I don't know what exactly is in the movement. But if you have that kind of momentum, why the fuck would you hold back? You're trying to make those checks. Yeah, and I don't. I I don't disagree with that at all. I I agree with what you're saying. But what I'm saying as far as your skill set, you're not a you're not a fine-tuned MMA fighter. And if you went into a championship fight right now with Israel Asana, he would not win that. I extremely high caliber. He knocked out standing up in a kickboxing fight, Israel Asanya, who has knocked out a bunch of people standing up who couldn't take him down. So again, I'm gonna say this: he's on the level of striking with Israel Asanya. Maybe Israel could choke him out. Maybe, okay. maybe 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 you know somebody can out wrestle him. But striking, he is absolutely on the he's on the championship levels let's, of the. Let's go to the fight at hand then, because okay, I, we can save Izzy for when they actually get matched up. Because right and, now and I just want, he hasn't he hasn't lost an MMA fight and, and since 2015. That's seven years ago. Seven. That's a long time, man. You know what I mean? That's like, people earn their black belt in that time frame. This is no disrespect to the people he's fought, but as far as Sean Strickland and Alex Pereira go, Sean Strickland has a way tougher resume in the MMA world. And MMA is not the same as kickboxing, whether people want to agree, agree, there is stand up involved, but at the same time, there's a lot of other things you need to think about and worry about. Sean Strickland has a very smart, very high, very high fighting IQ. There's a reason this guy's on a six fight win streak. He only has three losses in his career, 10 knockouts, four submissions. He's, he can finish it standing up and he can finish it on the ground. But but who, who did he get taken down from and ragdolled by Kamaru Usman at 170? Who, and, who also well, that's the pound, for also pound beat him, best fighter in the world right now. Who also now, so. beat him at 170, uh, Ponzinibbio. He's lost a few times, man, by, by guys. By well, guys we're talking who, about 170. Obviously, that's not his weight class because moving up to 185 and having not to cut the extra weight he went through, on a six fight, a six, could be six a good fight thing. Ab- absolutely. But but check this out. When, when you're talking about his skill set, you're talking about a guy who, in my opinion, in my opinion, because I absolutely think he's dog shit, in my opinion, who just has a jab. The guy has a fucking jab and some decent, some decent, not even great, some decent takedown defense. Well, and I've uh, been in there. I personally have wrestled in fucking multiple states, state champion wrestlers in, in different years and different brackets and all all that shit. That guy's wrestling is dog shit. That's, compared to, I was just going to say, I don't think that's true because I heard from extremely high ranking people in the UFC brass that this guy has outstanding grappling. He never needs to use it. Because guys can't touch him because 
Sean Strickland I'm talking about, controls distance so right. well. He doesn't need to do much because his jab is so effective. That's I'm not, I'm not going to stick. You know what? I don't even want to stick on that topic very long. And, and I, I'm not going to argue that maybe, maybe your sources are right. I'm going off of my pure opinion, but it, 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 what I'm, what I was leading into is this is forcing a stand up fight. Alex Pereira's not looking to take anybody down. These guys are going to be on the feet. And if all you have is a fucking jab for Alex Pereira, you're going to get chewed the fuck up. And that's all I was saying. Well, here, Here's the thing. All right. You got to think Sean Strickland, his last fight against Jack Hermanson obviously wasn't the most you know, mind Lord, blowing. If it comes like that, boy, I'm putting a lot of money. But here's, you, dude, you're a fighter, so you should know this: that he didn't need to do much more than control the distance and use his jab. And if, he knew that he was going to pick that's, him apart. That's another thing that frustrates the shit out of me: is he uses basic technique to out, literally outscore a round. But, he his, but I was leading. He doesn't in, go in there. His highlights of him talking to people are the last ten seconds of the fight, man. I was yeah, leading I fought, into to, to that, my dude. point. My point of that he also fought fought very very high level strikers like Uriah Hall and completely neutralized him. Uriah if he fought couldn't Uriah do Hall anything. in 2011, if he fought Uriah Hall in 2011, I, I would argue the fact that 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 that, that was an, a, a, a notable win. He fought a fucking old washed up crybaby ass Uriah Hall who literally has crowds chanting fuck you die. I don't care about Uriah Hall. Uriah don't Hall is still good, who, bro. He, he's who else he beat though? Chris Weidman, he beat Anderson I, Silva. He's, dude, Uriah Hall is a decorated give, fighter. Give, give me somebody on that resume besides Jack Hermanson, who looked like do- dog shit, and right. an old, and an uh, old. He's and beaten, an old He's also beaten. He's, hold on, he's also beaten Brandon Allen, who's uh, who's up and coming, and that kid's gonna be a monster. Soon. Okay, that was a good he's, win. I'll he's give also you that one. beat that one's solid. That one's a solid. Dub. He's also beat Christoph Jocko, who's. Oh, that guy's also a really good fighter. Fucking Jocko has never been tested. That was his first guy who didn't, because because Strickland literally does not break on, under just my, minute pressure. Jocko broke. That was what that was, and it, I don't I don't want to hear that fight because that fight was dog shit again. In, okay, in my opinion, I think that Sean Strickland hasn't had to use his tools to the fullest of his abilities. I don't. I don't because he has. Hold on, because he hasn't been tested. Now. I, disagree with that i don't disagree with that but that's what that's what i was leading with is i don't again if we're talking this is a forced stand-up fight if sean strickland's gonna force a stand-up fight you're gonna get fucking ko'd alex Pereira is a world-class multiple time kickboxing champion if me and you were sitting down and either of, of us were matched up and what you know we're both corner each other you would tell me <laughs> we're not gonna go in there and fucking stand up with this guy and act like everything's rosy daisy. If you want to box this guy, that's fine. But we're gonna have to get. Some, we have to have a solid game plan. Ali, and and the thing that scares me about Sean Strickland is he doesn't seem. He may be smarter than he looks, but he doesn't seem educated. I think he goes in there and says, "I'm gonna stick to the basics, and I'm just gonna try to outwin the rounds." Like I, I don't think. I, I don't know. Look, I I don't. I'm not a fan of how he's been winning recently, but I think the fact is that he spars. He doesn't really do anything but spar. And to me, you know, I don't, I kind of, I, I'm not a fan of that because I feel like it gets you like in a rhythm where it's hard to break. Like, he, like, as you're seeing, some, he's, some of your he's best using what works. Fight, some of your best spars, and you know this as a fighter, some of your best fucking fights are in a sparring match in a Hold gym on. that un, untaped nobody's ever yeah, going to see. I, I'm not, it's not even about the war that he's going through. The fact is the rhythm that he gets into, he, he knows what works and he only uses that. So in his fights, it's so effective because he's been sparring nonstop in his training camps that when he goes in there, he goes right to sparring mode. And, you know, you know, if the guy's not if, if you're if you fought so many times in sparring and training camp, and you're like, oh, this is just like so and so. I'm just going to use this, this and that. My jab's going to work. I just got to control distance. Look, now, when you're fighting a guy like Alex Pereira, he's not going to be able to just stand there and throw his jab and sit back. And I mean, if he can't be touched by Alex Pereira, which. Bruno Silva made him fucking work. And I think that's the same game plan that Sean Strickland's going to need to use to beat him. He's going to need to make it a clinch but, fight. But, but don't make it, don't, don't take out my boy Alex like that, man. He's a fucking dog. He comes to fight every fight, man. And, and you have to respect that because the boy got skills on his feet and he is slick. He's a sh- slick striker. I was watching the Kamaru Usman fight with Sean Strickland and I noticed a couple of things. Usman was throwing jabs and he was he was doing he was doing it right and, and and anytime Strickland touched him, he would shoot a single. Whether he got it or not, he just shot the single. And 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 Strickland just panicked. He's changed. He's obviously adapted. He no longer panics. He gets into comfortable uh, grappling rhythms and exchanges and does extremely well. But the thing about it is he's not had somebody outstrike him or show him 
crisp striking back to put him in a defensive striking position. With this fight, I feel like it's going to end up putting him into a, a trap. And I believe in my heart, Alex is going to knock him unconscious because well, of that. Uh, and you're right. And I, I, I don't agree with the Alex is going to knock him out for one reason, because what it looks like is Alex Pereira is so set on facing Israel Desanya that he's forcing the knockout. And that's exactly what he did against Bruno Silva. He had moments where he was down, where he was, it looked like he might finish the fight, but there were also moments where he was getting I'm not, I'm not MMA, a MMA beat. Like, I'm not a fool. Would... Look, he, he's going to have a 25-minute UFC main event on his hands or co-main event. It's going to be a tough fight for, for uh, um, my boy Alex. And, and, and believe you me, I understand that this, this, this could go really bad if, one, Alex gasses out in any fucking round. If he gasses out in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, Sean's, Sean's not going to gas out. That's one thing he's not going to yeah, do. He's so not going to gas Here's the thing is Sean Strickland has the cardio advantage. He has, he controls distance and he's, whether you like the guy's personality or not, bro, when he comes to fighting, he, he does knows, not have a striking advantage in fucking in the legs and the ha fucking hands. He doesn't have a striking. If, advantage. If they were just kickboxing, Alex Pereira will, I take him no matter what, because it's MMA and he can do other things like leg kick and whatever. I'm excited because Pereira's going to force, Strickland to throw combinations and I don't think that's going to be good for Pereira he's going to throw hard and he's going to make Strickland come out of his fucking jab only shell and try to be a fucking Muhammad Ali he's going to have to actually throw combinations Strickland probably can crack and I haven't seen him throw a haymaker or a fucking bomb in a long time and Pereira dude judging off of I mean it, does, it really depends on how Str Sean Strickland wants to take this fight but if he fights how Bruno Silva did by the third round Paredes he's bro he's a he's not built for MMA yet like that that's what I'm saying this is too quick too soon for him in my eyes even well, though he's an elite one kickboxer thing, one thing one or two things for Alex Pereira is either he's going to realize he's not on that level yet and he has to sharp up a few uh, sharpen up a few things so it's a win-win for him right he jumps up fights a big name and either he does well and gets moves on or doesn't do well and he still was able to fight a, new, a big name and doesn't really put him at risk. Sean Strickland's taking all the risk, but I'm not worried about that. I really break down this fight as a kickboxing fight because I do not see this going to the ground at all. And I believe if, if Alex has enough cardio, doesn't get into stupid cage grappling exchanges and stay, stay up on there and really... Well, guys are fucking missing out. And I wish the coach would just step up and say this shit or or, or put it into a training regimen. Well, we did a Demon MMA in Hawaii, in, in KL Hawaii. Bro, uh, our trainer was absolutely on point. All we did was drill. We did drills off the cage, from the crate, bottom, on your back on the cage, all that stuff. And 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 all we did was drill takedowns, drill take, takedown defense. And, and, and you know what? When we got in those positions, we never got tired. Guys were getting put up on the cage for two minutes, Pushing off, acting like they just struggled, which maybe you're you're fighting the best of the best. I understand. I understand what what a real athlete feels like. You, you're going to get tired, but you shouldn't be exhausted where you're, you can't even hold up your hands. That's unacceptable at this level. You need to be able to have that cardio. So if Alex Pereira comes in with that cardio, it's a long night in the office for Sean Strickland because he's not going to get that patty cake sparring session that he was hoping for. He's going to get a dog who's ready to fucking fight and push the pace on him. Well, this is where I think that it's a, you know, big risk, big reward. Uh, that's the heart of a fighter, Alex Pereira. I mean, you got to go and big got, or go You home. have to respect that. You have I, to respect I do respect that, but I think it's a lose-lose because, one, the UFC is obviously trying to push this guy as the only guy who can beat Anderson Silva. He's already knocked him. He, they've been doing that before they even signed this is, guy. Israel Adesanya. Israel Adesanya. Yeah, no. You said, you said uh, Anderson Silva. Oh, whatever. Yeah, Israel. The only guy who can beat Israel Adesanya. My bad. But they've been pushing Alex Pereira before they even got him. So now you have him. Why would you suit him up against somebody like Sean Strickland, who potentially let, who let has, me, let has me, a high chance of beating this guy? And it is a loss for Strickland as well. He let doesn't me, gain anything. Let me this. explain. Let me explain this because because he doesn't speak English, bro. He doesn't speak English. They're not worried about the U.S. crowd because they say, oh, if Strong, Sean Strickland beats him, he'd beat a big-name Brazilian. The U.S. U, U.S. guys still love him. They still love him. It, it, they don't care, bro. He speaks Brazilian. He's a big name over there. They're, they're, that's, they're, that's fine. And then it's all tucked away. That's why they said it's a win. It's a, For the company, it's a win-win. We get a big name over there, a big name over here, match them up. We get pay-per-views sold on both sides fantastic everybody gets a high five these guys are still in a contract they don't get shit as far as pay-per-view points or anything like that because they're not champions they're not fighting for an intern belt so it's a w for the ufc well, that's here, here's re, regard okay real quick who 
who we're go, we'll go into who we have winning. I obviously, if it's not obvious yet, I think Sean Strickland is going to get the win. I think if he turns it into a grappling match, he's going to finish the round, the fight before round three. If it's a standing up war, it's going to be tough for him, but I still think he can control the distance and do what he's been doing the past couple of fights and get a five round decision, maybe split decision. But if he turns it into a grappling fight, Pereira literally will stand no chance. That's my opinion. Um, so are you take, who are you taking? I'm going for Sean Strickland. And like I said, if, it, if he wrestles from round one, he's going to tap him out by round three. If they stand up the whole fight, I still think he's going to win a five round decision. I'm not uh, so I'm going to go with the underdog in this one. I'm going to go with my boy Pereira because I really I've been watching this guy a long time for many years now, and um, I'm not bandwagon. This is a guy I've watched because uh, I'm a kickboxer. I've watched kickboxing. Wait, hold on, I think I messed up. I don't even know if these guys are a main event because I believe they're on a pay per view card. So if it's I don't three know, rounds, I think... three rounds, I think Sean Strickland's definitely winning. If it's three rounds, it's going to be it's going to be even better for Pereira. That's where I, that's what I'm saying. Like if it's five rounds. It's going to be a tougher night of the office for, for, for Pereira because he's really going to have to make sure his cardio is up to date and, and shown up. Um, but if it's a three-round fight, it's an easy walk, walk, kick in the walk. I mean, uh, uh, you, you know, eating cake, walking down the park, whatever you want to say, bro. Th this guy is going to go in neutral and just roll down the hill, buddy. Like, Sean Strickland does not have the level of striking that I really don't believe. He Every fight for the last six fights, he's won off of basic striking and defensive takedowns. He's in a bad rhythm. For a guy who's who's a really good striker, I just feel, for some reason, I feel like Alex Pereira is going to get it done. I think he's going to KO Sean Strickland. I think he's going to KO him. So you got Alex Pereira winning by KO. I got Sean Strickland winning by either a third round submission or and, again, and honestly, and I want to say this: I'm taking Alex Pereira, but I want to say Sean Strickland's cardio is, is is the only way I see him winning this by a decision. I don't see him finishing Alex unless Alex completely just gasses out. And here's a, here's another thing to take into account, right? You say he wins off of basic technique. Islam Makachev is the wrestling version of Sean Strickland, and I and I, talk, I fucking hate him too. And he's a piece. Well, of Well, the too. fact is, I talk mad shit about Islam, but he is highly effective. At using He's, basic techniques. From what I hear, he could hold down a fucking elephant, and that makes me very upset. Go fight at 185 or 170, you fucking punk. My point being that that technique always wins, and I feel like if you have the gas tank disagree. on top of that. I'm not disagreeing with you, man. This is the fight game. I love the fighters. Why I'm picking the fucking cowboys. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is my team. Let me go, buddy. No, go ahead. I'm just saying. I'm just adding in to the fact that team I kickboxing. just That's Sean what I'm Strickland. Going. Sean Strickland's a piece Just of shit. I fucking effective. hate his attitude. The fact that he said he wanted to kill somebody in the ring makes me fucking very upset. Everybody got families to go home to, you fucking psycho dumb piece of shit. But at the end of the day, he's very talented, got great cardio. He's a fucking hungry, hungry beast in the cage. And you got to, as a fighter, I hella respect his technique and his, his capability. But if I, I, I'm looking at him, like, I'm going to, if I come into this fight, I'm going to fight you. Bro, all you got is a jab. You better watch the fuck out. I'm going to chew you up in many ways. And Alex Pereira is the type of guy that can come in there with the skill set standing up to do that. But, again, you're playing a vicious game. This guy's going to keep the keep the basic technique. So if you skip a beat and you mess up and do something fancy and you get Sean on your back for five minutes, it's going to be a long night for you. And you better have the cardio to back that. So now, it, could, it, it could go either way. But again, I want I want to have faith in my boy Pereira. I think he has the ability to to knock him out standing up. Now with the this been, and if he, set and up, I want to clarify this: if he knocks him out, it's going to be in the first two minutes. It's not after that. There's no chance of Alex knocking him out. It's, it's going to go down. Well, it just uh, depends uh, if dramatically it's a, after that. If it's a three round fight, I, I, Pereira has the the tools in the bag to be able to finish the fight at any point. He showed that against Bruno Silva, because you know that was a good fight for him. He needed to get tested like that. I think the biggest difference is that Pereira six four. And Sean Strickland 6'1". So if anything, it is giving Sean Strickland more of that Israel Adesanya type figure to get him ready for a title And that's shot. the other thing I was going to say, too, is, you know, Jack Hermanson was big, but he's a big guy and he's young and he he did not have the cardio to come in and he he, he really blew his load too early. So I'm hoping Alex Pereira doesn't do that. I'm hoping he comes out and is, you know, fights like how he fought Izzy, calm, cool, and collective and go out there and fucking piece him up and then he can get the job done, you know? But Sean, again, Sean's... Sean's one of those guys, man. He's the joker in the pack. You, you never know what he's going to – what card he's ready to play or how he's going to play the dance. So, again, he's he's improved leaps and bounds. He's on a great win streak. And, and well, with speaking, that, he's learned a lot. Speaking of cards in, in the hand, the UFC is not, is not stupid, and they don't just give people what they want. So what I honestly believe is going to happen here, especially since Robert Whitaker is fighting Vittori 
June 11th and these guys are fighting June 30th, I'm pretty fucking confident. They're going to match up the winners. The, the winner of that fight is going to fight the winner of this fight to give you the next number one contender because obviously Cannoneer is going to fight uh, Adesanya and that has yet to be determined, I believe. The, the so, date's not, the date hasn't been picked so out yet. Thinking like a matchmaker, this is matchmaker heaven because you literally have the top two. It's a dudes. win win. That's what I was trying to say. It's a win win for the UFC, for the fighters. It's a date. Like, it's a lot of them putting their balls on the table, man. Sean but here's Strickland, the thing. Give it to him too. He's putting his nuts on the table, but if he doesn't Sean, have to do that. If Sean Strickland loses this fight, depending how he loses, he's still most likely in the top 10. If Pereira absolutely. loses, absolutely. If Pereira take loses. But if Pereira loses this fight, it's not like he's going to get to fight Vittori or Whitaker after they. Why would you throw him back to? But the it just—it's just a risk that Sean doesn't need to take. You know what I mean? I think it's a risk Pereira doesn't need to take. I think Sean, he's, I believe he no, took this fight because no, he thinks it's going, easy. Well, when you, go, when you go fishing, you always want to take the, the, the bait that's going to catch the biggest fish. But if you catch something smaller, oh, 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 well, right? So when Alex Pereira said, hey, I want Cannoneer, they said, hey, here's the next best thing. He just took that. that that's, you know, Sean, Sean should not have been the guy that said yes. I give him credit, but, but at the end of the day, from a business standpoint, I don't think this favors him if he loses. And if you're not, if he doesn't knock this guy out, and which would probably put him right into the top 15 or top 10, I would imagine, if you're beating number four and you're not even ranked, which is fucking almost of her, unheard of nowadays. Sean Strickland needs to win this fight because he needs to prove himself against Whitaker or Vittori. I think he would have a better chance against Vittori, but I do believe that we'll get into this later. But I obviously, I can't go against Robert Whitaker. I just think the guys evolve so Bobby much. Bobby Knuckles, baby. We love but, Bobby. I mean, but that's an interesting matchup in the future that we're going to have another video for is that Robert Whitaker and Marvin Vittori, that is so interesting, especially the fact that Marvin Vittori beat Paulo Costa at 205. That makes him even more scary in my eyes. But regardless, uh, I'm going to take well, let, Sean Strickland in this fight. You know, <clears throat> let, let us know, boys, what you guys think in the comments down below, what, whatever you guys think is going to be the best, The you know, who got the best chance of winning this Sean, yeah. Sean Strickland and, and – uh, uh, Alex Pereira fight, but you know, honestly, boys, I'm taking Alex Pereira. I'm always gonna go with the striker. I think he's gonna, you know, I honestly just have a feeling he's gonna KO him for some reason because Sean just got that basic stand up and he's finally fighting somebody who's super advanced in my opinion. But again, MMA four ounce gloves, you never know what the hell's gonna happen. I'm going the crazy man, Sean Strickland. He's gonna pick his ass apart, sit back, probably make you can do. I think Sean Strickland's gonna do whatever he wants in this fight, honestly. So Hit the bell icon below to be notified when we drop more content. Hit us in the comments. Let us know who you guys have winning, and we will see you guys on the next one. All right, boys. Haters talking shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club dripping like I'm fresh paint. I could see through the facade like an 